What is this is Hobo Girl, and this is what I know. What I know for today is uh, I'm putting a load on my Ford tractor, and it's a little bit late at night, so sorry if I'm mumbling or slurring my words. It's just that I'm more tired than anything. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm just finishing up the loader, or the brackets at least, and then uh, in about 10 days or so, uh, or about uh, 12, 13 days, I'll probably get back to it because I'm going on vacation. So, but anyways, I'm just trying to get everything mocked up here and see I already drilled one hole, but I gotta drill the other one. But before I thought, I should probably make a video of this and because there's not too many when I look for how to install my loader. But anyways, uh, what you're going to have to do is Ford tractors suck to put loaders on, especially when they haven't had one before. Uh, if you've already had one, it's pretty easy. You just mount, bolt up your plate. Uh, you put in your shaft. Make sure your flange is on the other end. And it's easy. Also, it's a lot easier if you have the right parts and your parts aren't crappy. Um, but anyways, I ended up having to take a loader off of a, uh, later tractor, a later Ford tractor. This is a 98N2, by the way. But, um, anyways, I had to buy it. There's a new front crank pulley that has tapped focus. All right, I'm trying to zoom you in here. It has four tapped holes. Uh, if your tractor, or if you're doing it right... Uh, there'll be a, a, I'll pop it in the link in the description. There should be a, a certain, I don't know, like a, a splined hub that bolts up to that special pulley. Um, not too hard. Uh, don't buy the cheapest pulley though, cause, uh, I bought the cheapest one, which was like 33 bucks. Uh, probably not a very good idea. I had to re-tap the holes because they weren't working right and just, don't do it that way. But anyways, to get that pulley on, you have to take off your front cradle, which would be this piece right here. Mount your radiator, you have to take off. But uh, there's six bolts along the sides there. You have to take that off. You have to take that off. And then the axle comes forward after you unbolt these arms. You do not need to unbolt your steering. It's just, if you can, unbolt them. But you don't have to. But it's just easier if you do. I didn't because I don't want to screw with the um, straightness of my tractor so I can keep driving straight. But anyways, uh, it'd be a good time to replace your belt, mainly because you're already there and belts aren't a whole ton of money. But there is a, I'll get you a view from the top here. Right there, there's a coupler that would be on a later tractor, a later Ford tractor. But there's supposed to be that hub right there. But uh, there's that coupler I just bolted on and I didn't use two other holes. Put that coupler, bolts on, and then uh, it runs. This keyed shaft goes through to another coupler. They're identical. And then there is this rubber bushing or hub, whatever you want to call it. And then you bolt your hub to there. I got one right here, actually. Uh, so there's these raised portions, as you can see. Uh, the raised portions go to whichever hub you're bolting to. So like you'd have one coupler right there and the other in there, and then you'd have one on the other side would be in those two holes. If you get, yeah, if you get what I mean. But um, yeah, as you can see, that uh, there it makes more sense right there. But yeah, and then your hydraulic pump is pretty self-explanatory. It pops into this uh, bracket, and then it self-centers pretty much. But then. Uh, I, I might give you guys a link. I'll have to ask the person I got the manuals from. But I might give you guys a link. Because they're not my manuals. They're um, the guy Drop, or, uh, uh, Dropbox. No, not Dropbox. Scanned them and sent them to me. But I'll see if he uh, lets me, lets me uh, give you guys some of that information. At least I'll just tell you it. But uh, there's a hole right there. And you have to drill a hole through your front cradle. Then you put a bolt in right there. And then there's a bolt right there. This is a fine thread bolt. Just wanted to let you guys know. And then... Uh, from what I've heard, is there has to be a, that, um, be a piece welded onto this that goes into a kingpin. But I've never seen a bracket like that. And 
Uh, this load, this tractor has had a loader before, and that kingpin is supposed to be drilled out. But this, I don't think it is. At least on later tractors, it's supposed to be drilled out. But this one, I don't think it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. But then, uh, you kind of, I put a bottle jack on there to kind of hold it up, and then I could mock it up. You put in this one right here, and that hole is bigger than it needs to be. So you can sort of slide your plate around. Then I just put a bottle jack here just to hold it up there in place. And then, you'll see it's not holding much. But then you just tighten that down once you're good. And you drill your two holes. Make sure uh, you have this one tightened down before you drill anything. And I mean anything before you drill it or cut or do anything. Make sure you have all of this mocked up. Make sure you all have it where you want it to be. And make sure it's going to work right. Just do that. You'll you'll thank me later. You have to do. You, you guys, you can't. You can't go too fast with these. Otherwise, you're not going to be good. And then, if you're anything like me, chances are it's going to catch on fire because, well, that's what happened to the truck when I went too fast, or not too fast, but when I worked on it too fast, it caught on fire eventually. But anyways, uh, yeah, do not go too fast. That's really all you got to do. If you can find yourself a manual. Uh, they tell you quite a bit about how to install these loaders. And it has to be a loader manual or an instructions manual. It can't be just the tractor manual. But then anyways, you're, you got your loader goes in those two holes. And there's some brackets that go in the fenders. But that'll be in a later clip. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I'll probably show you guys the next clip in about 12 days. I have this clip on here for a second. Uh... You have to be careful too. Uh, you're seriously going to break something in your wrist or your fingers or your arms. Because here is a Milwaukee Fuel just with a half inch bit. Those are a half inch. So uh, just let you guys know. But uh, let's say you're drilling along and drilling along. and Oh no, the bit catches and it goes. And it ends up breaking off your hand. It goes like this. And then your hand usually smashes against that palm. And it's really going to hurt. I want to warn you guys. Don't screw around, okay? Uh, make sure you have two hands on it. Uh, it will extremely hurt if your hand comes in contact with here. And most likely, it's probably going to end up in a trip to the hospital or the ER. In the worst case. Uh, so yeah, and make sure if you're doing drilling and stuff. It's probably a good idea to have someone around to help you. Or not to help you, but... Someone around in case you get in trouble. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys that warning. Because it can get... You don't know... Drilling seems something really easy. But you can really hurt yourself if you're not paying attention. What I do is I'll stop incrementally to let the bit cool down. And I'll see how far my drill bit's in. If it's in far enough, I'll grab right down here. And I'll have one hand on the that. And then, in case it catches, I'll slip my hands away. Or... If it's not catch that bad, you can either just pry it down. We'll give you time. If you put your hand right here, it might give you time to slip out your hand that's on the grip. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that. But uh, yeah, now you're probably going to see me another 10, 12 days. See you later. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.